Scrooge and welcome to GustinShow.com. Hope you're having a good day. I'm going to talk to you about the mortgage process and everybody wants low rates, everybody wants to close fast. So the low rates, that's an act of God, but closing fast, we can, you can help yourself by helping us help you. So when we ask you for things, try to listen to us. I had a customer today tell me, do I have to stand on my head and sing a song while I give you this document? So some of the things we ask you for are absolutely really silly. So. Just bear with us. We are just, we're just, we're just the middle guy, and we we need things a certain way. I I think it's because of the collapse of 2008, underwriters are really strict on getting everything exactly right. I mean, some of these documents you send over to us, it's obvious they're legitimate. It's obvious you have the money in your bank account, but it's not all the pages, or it's a little smudgy. But anybody can make it out, but it's not perfect. So these underwriters are going to ask for everything to be perfect. So help us get them perfect, and, and we apologize but from the bottom of our hearts that what we're asking you for is not us asking for you, it's, it's the rules of this business. So the very first thing when you, you sit down with your, your loan officer is you're going to go through the application and get pre-approved. Now when he asks you for the documents, this is what we should ask you for on a basic traditional loan. Two years tax returns for the last two years, all pages. If you have self-employed your business, I'll need the business returns two years, all pages. Not all files require tax returns, but we still need them for the file. If you're W-2, we need last two years W-2s. If you have 10 jobs in the last two years, I need all 10 W-2s. And I need to put those job histories into your application. So make it clear to us where you work, the dates you work. Phone numbers to verify your employment is very crucial. So make sure you get us those documents and you, we get it organized properly. Now, if you're 1099 and you're w 2 I need all your 1099s and all your W-2s and your tax returns. So we need all this stuff regarding your what you send to the IRS or IRS sends to you, vice versa. We need that stuff. Now, if you can't find it, you can call your employers, you can call your accountant, you can go on TurboTax to see if you can print a copy. In some cases, we can't take transcripts. We don't like them. Some, some underwriters say no and some say yes. And we don't know what underwriter's gonna get your file. So we really like to have the actual copy. Don't send us transcripts. It could delay your file. So that's the first thing. Now, the next thing is going to be two months bank statements. Now, I want to start off by saying, I always tell my realtors, but they always forget, make sure the earnest money that you put down, because the earnest money sometimes happens before you guys even talk to us. Do not go put $1,000 cash in your bank account and then write a check for your earnest money. Do not go take $1,000 to your currency exchange and get a money order. Cash cannot be used towards this transaction. They're going to verify your earnest money. So let's say you didn't do that. I want two months bank statements where any assets are going to be used for this transaction. So if the down payments come from this bank account, your earnest money came from that, I need two months bank statements on both accounts. If you're going to be transferring money from one account to the other, I need two months on the account that's being transferred from and two months where it's transferred to. So keep that in mind. If you have a 401k, I need all pages to a most recent quarterly statement. So if it's, if it's June 30th and the quarterly statements come out January to March and then April through June, they may ask us for June in the middle of July because it will come out by the time the underwriter gets it. So you, even though you don't have it today, you'll have it next week. We'll need that because it's the most recent. If you're withdrawing funds and using your funds from your 401k, we need a couple things. We need the terms of withdrawal, which is a very difficult document. I recommend you call your 401k company and ask them to send it to you. It's just a basic terms of withdrawal for any type of withdrawal, not your specific withdrawal from this transaction, but any withdrawal anybody would make who has this account for, for 401k. So it's just like a six page, 10 page, random amount of uh, pages that talk about the different terms of withdrawals that you can make. And then if you do withdraw, we're gonna need to copy the check and then we're gonna need a copy of your 401k statement showing it came out. So you need a, a, kind of a transaction summary of your 401k showing the money leaving. Same with um, your bank statement. Even though you give us two months bank statements, they're going to want to see the earnest money check clearing. And then we have to get an activity statement showing that the earnest money coming out. I know it's silly stuff, but this is what they want. So we have to prove the earnest money actually came out of your account. Even though you showed me $100,000 in your two months bank statements, they want to see the $1,000 coming out. It's silly. And the way you do it is with an activity statement. Um, now, if you're getting a gift, then we're going to need the gift process. We're going to need a one month donor statement copy of the check, a gift letter that's executed, which we'll send to you, 
the proof the money's coming out of the donor's account, and then the deposit's going into your account, and we have to get proof with the activity statement showing the money was actually cleared in your account. So those are some things we're gonna ask for. Um, one month pay stubs. This always confuses people because they think they get paid twice a month, but that's a month. I mean, they get paid every two weeks, and they give us two pay stubs, they think that's a month. It's 28 days, the underwriters want five, five, you know, 4.4 .4 weeks worth. So if you get paid every two weeks, we need three stubs. If you get paid twice a month, we'll take two. If you get paid every week, we want five. So we need a full consecutive, no gap. You can't give us like April 15th and then skip May 1st and give us May 15th. And we have to have one 30 day consecutive period of pay stubs. And that's very important. And they gotta be legible. So if you fax them to us and they come over crooked and it's all smudged, these underwriters are strict. It's not us, it's the underwriters. Um, so those are what we're gonna need. So we're gonna need your tax returns, your W-2s, the 1099s, two months bank statements, any 401ks, any gift process. The gift process you can give us a little bit later, then a month worth of pay stubs. Then we're gonna ask you for a copy of your ID. So we have to have an ID that's valid. So if your driver's license expired, give us a passport. Passport's expired. Give us your military ID. That you don't have one of those, go down to the DMV and get your license because they want a valid ID that's current. So that, keep that in mind. That's not us. I'm not making you stand in your head and sing songs while you provide us documents, but I know that's how you're going to feel. So once you've given us that chunk of stuff, we can submit your loan to the underwriter for initial underwriting. Now the gift process does not have to be there. And and another thing that they're going to ask for down the road is the insurance. So you can keep the gift and the insurance that you're going to get to the side because we can get to do that during the process. But the other stuff we need to submit the loan. We need the tax returns, W-2s, pay stubs, bank statements, and ID to submit the loan. That's the bare minimum. Now, if you got a really good loan officer and we really analyze your file, we might ask for some LOXs like you were late on this or why did you have a job gap for a month? Little, little explanations always help. Underwriters love explanations the more you give a perfect file to an underwriter the nicer they are to you so the more we give it up front and explain any story that you have the nicer the underwriter will be so so come out with the first round of conditions it'll be three or four if you throw her things with that not legible missing w-2s she's going to give you 30 conditions just because she's mad because she can't figure out this thing that we gave her we've given her a puzzle that she can't solve so they get angry and they start really conditioning you so the better we submit these files the better it goes for you. So keep that in mind, we're on your side. So then during the process, the underwriter's gonna ask for insurance. You're gonna have to call around and get some insurance for the house. They're gonna ask for the gift process if there's a gift letter. They're gonna ask for these letters explanations. We call them LOXs. So if they're gonna, if they're gonna ask for these things down the road, they're gonna ask for um, explanations on some large deposits, possibly. They might ask, uh, they might find something in your background saying, did you foreclose on a house two years ago? That things like that pop up. So we have to satisfy these conditions. That's our job. So once we get the list of conditions from the underwriter, we call you up and say this is what the underwriter wants. Then you get the, all that stuff for us. Again, try to get it perfect as what we asked for it. We'll send it in. Hopefully that's all we need, but rarely. Then the underwriter's gonna come back with another round of conditions. conditions. And then we're gonna satisfy, satisfy those while we're ordering the appraisal and title. Hopefully that's all back by the time we get that second round of conditions with the appraisal, title, your second round of conditions, we send it to underwriter for a clear to close, we get the clear to close, and then we schedule the closing. That's kind of how the process works. It's very difficult, it's very tedious, even some of the best loans can get can be hard. A lot of people, well to do, really good on the computer, struggle with getting some of these things like activity statements, uh, terms of withdrawal, proof that the 401k, the money cleared. We have to have it exactly the right way. Um, one of the things I want to tell you about is getting activity statements. An activity statement is an in-between month bank statement where you're going to show that your earnest money check came out of your bank account. What that has to be is not a snapshot, not a transaction summary. It, it, it's got to be an activity statement. An activity statement has your name, last four of the account number, and it shows the debits, the credit, credits, and the balance changing. So there's no doubt in the mind what's happening in your bank account every day so the underwriter can see if there's any deposits going in or if there's any unique credits or sorry debits that you're paying maybe she may discover a debt that's not disclosed so they're looking for a lot of things they need to see that and the most important thing is they have to have the url address in the bottom the url address is like http backward slash backward slash and it's got the bank's name on it and some you know at signs and number signs and exclamation points so that has to be on there or it's not acceptable by the underwriter if you can't get that off your internet because you're not internet savvy 
I'm gonna send you to the bank, I'm gonna have them print it out for you, and then they're gonna stamp it for us. So we're sorry that we have to ask you for all this stuff, but that's just the way it goes, and that's the process of the loan and what you should expect. And again, I apologize for all loaners, for loan officers out there. This is just our job, and it's horrible. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please call me anytime at 630-915-7550 or go to gustinshow.com, G-U-S-T-A-N-C-H-O.com.